This is our destination for today, and in this upload, I shake things up with my trailer, we do my least favorite thing while on an off-road trip, and our power wagon gets a deflating lesson about cornering in the sand. All right, good morning, guys. We are here in a beautiful forest, and where are we, Paul? Where are we? Oregon. Oregon. <laughs> Oregon, Oregon. Okay, Oregon, Oregon is a big state, but we're in the southeast corner of Oregon, and uh, we're surrounded by all these trees, and they're, they're really cool. I'll show you them in a second, because they're all red towards the bottom. Uh, we just finished our first night camping. We've got, we're behind us, the off-grid trailer. We slept in it. What a great sleep. You know what was awesome is being able to wake up, and it was cold, and I just hit the button for heat, and it was warm. It was perfect. That's it. <laughs> We're in uh, day two of our week long of adventures in Southeast Oregon. Today we're going to go check out these lava tubes, uh, which Paul knows where they are somewhere around here. And uh, apparently we can hike down into them and we can keep going as far as we want until what? We run out of oxygen? Yeah, we oxygen yeah, so as long as we can breathe, we can keep going. But look, we've got the whole crew here with Sean. Story till now. We've got Paul from Epic Adventure Outfitters, and Chef John has got the Forerunner out with us. And uh, you guys haven't seen this rig, but this is the Power Wagon from Modular Rocks, because Ryan is here. You've seen his Volvo C303, but look at this thing. Oh, you're up there! <laughs> I didn't even hey. know you are up there! <laughs> hey, good morning! Hiding up here, <laughs> in my nest. In your nest. <laughs> a lot of the mud and dirt in this area is like really red and clay and um, like it's not quite like red stone, but it's like red mud and I guess all the dust kicks up and look at the bottom of the trees here, it's really red and then it becomes more normal as we go up. But, yeah. I just noticed the weirdest interesting things. Space Check this thing out. This thing, like, I've never seen one of these, and it like tracks the satellites in the sky and moves around. And Sean bought Starlink because you know we need everything when we're off the grid. I know you guys are gonna be like, oh, you need to not be on the internet when you're out camping. Well, this is kind of work too, so it's good to be connected. But finished packing up the trailer here. Oh, look at that! All right, we're done. I'm gonna air down the trailer. I don't know what this thing is set at, and I honestly don't know what to uh, air down the trailer tires too, but I'm gonna guess that whatever they're at is not what we wanna be going down dirt roads on. 33 PSI, so I think I'm gonna just air it down to like 20, and we'll drop the air on the Wrangler down to its usual 14. That should uh, make life a little bit smoother. This thing has just been bouncing behind me whenever we hit a bump, but uh, probably because it has a lot of air pressure. So as we continue our journey, we're heading east on the southern part of Oregon. We're gonna make our way towards Idaho over the next couple of days. And today we're stopping at the lava tunnels. And we've also got plans to check out the sand dunes and the valleys and uh, canyons and buttes that are on this side of the state. And we'll cross over into Idaho towards our last day. So follow along with the adventure and hit that subscribe button and I'll be uploading a video every day that we're out here. Look at, look at all the rock. So this is all lava rock all along here. Super cool, just sticking up on the ground. Trees growing out of it. So we're just uh, watching the trailer behind us. And this Expedition 2.0 doesn't have off-grid's new crazy trailing arm suspension. It's got their regular suspension, which it's made for off-roading, but it doesn't have the same articulation and shocks. And I'm just kind of watching the trailer bounce in here and John's gonna get a couple of shots from behind us, but it definitely bounces around pretty good on some of these bumps as we go through. And, you know, we're noticing the tire come up in the air when there's a bump on one side and not the other but the Jeep's just towing it like it's not even there on these trails. We are here at the lava tubes. With a lovely parking job, everybody. Like how you have the DeWalt light, that's very good. You'll be, uh, yeah. you'll be needing that. I have uh, nine amp hours of uh, 60 go. volts. Okay. So for we, have down about, there. we have about a kilometer to go underground. All right, we all love hiking. It is quite warm out, but Paul says 
Uh, it is cold in the lava tubes, so I'm wearing a hoodie. After a short hike here, we've reached the uh, the lava tube. It's about just over a kilometer long, so this is kind of one of the main collapses so you can get into the, uh, behind me here, down to the right. And on my left is uh, kind of a smaller section. Down here is where in the 1960s they actually built a nuclear fallout shelter, so I think we should check that out first. That seems like the right thing to check out. Seems like the right thing to check out, right? So here it goes. I'm going in to the fallout shelter. Deep underground. Woo. Watch your head in here, it's low. <laughs> Do I need a splunking helmet? Probably. <laughs> what are the odds of lava coming back up here again? Not good. Not good. <laughs> not, not, not good. Not any time. Holy moly. Look at this. Oh, okay. This, so this can collapse. Oh, for sure it can, right? Like, look at as water comes through, right? Water just erodes everything. This is not going to wait till we go to the other tube. This is just a starter tube for you. <laughs> starter? This is the warm up. I'm trying to break you guys into this gently. <laughs> this is the warm up tube, no pun intended. This is the next tube, it's something else. So, this used to be a fallout shelter? Yeah, this used to be the nuclear fallout shelter. So, they had supplies here and stuff like that for, uh, for Oregon. So. Okay, let's go to the, uh, go to the, let's big, go to the big tube. Let's go to the big boy tube. Let's go to the big boy tube. All right, that was your starter cave. Starter cave! On to. On to something crazy. Real cave. <laughs> it's a noob tube. <laughs> this tube has uh, a little more room and uh, we've got some cool skylights as we walk down through the tube here. Look at this right here up above us. As you walk through the tubes there's uh, holes in the top. I feel like yeah, I feel like this is a start of some sort of movie where we go to the center of the earth or something. <laughs> so bright, I can't see past the light. There we go. All right, so now we get into the dark stuff. We're into the dark stuff. This, is... <laughs> this is it. <laughs> Look at this. Can't see nothing. Holy smokes. So you can go down here until you run out of oxygen? Uh, no, you go, um, uh, you go down about a kilometer and then there's a collapse in, so you just can't go any oh, further. Oh, you can't go any yeah, further. you just can't go any further. If watching cartoons as a child taught me anything, this is definitely quicksand. Last time I hiked around the edge here. I feel like this is what a horror movie starts with. <laughs> the floor falls out from beneath us. Look at this. Oh. Cool. Wow, that sounds really hollow. <laughs> Any idea how old this tube is? <clears throat> old. I would hazard to guess thousands and thousands upon thousands of years. Yeah. Ice forming here on the ground. It's getting quite cold. Staying warm by hiking. My favorite type of off-roading. Got a collapse up here. Oh yeah, that's, 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 that's a little terrifying at the same time. Look at this. <laughs> like the ceiling. Is what is that up there? Yeah, we're right. Some sort of sensor. It's got like buttons and things on it. Oh, look at that. You're getting it's a motion sensor. sensor. We're looking at the ceiling up here, right near this. Right near this cave in, and uh, it's pretty cracked above us. We don't want to disturb anything. I'm gonna make my way up here a little bit. Avoid the avoid the ice. Sure to, uh, <laughs> you sure to feel the difference in temperature as soon as you step out into the sun though. Wow, from ice to mid 20s, crazy.
What's for lunch there, John? We got sandwiches? Ham and Swiss wraps. wraps. Ham and Swiss. I don't have any smoked cheddar though there. You got the Tillamook cheese? Tillamook Swiss. Ooh, Swiss. Swiss. Yeah. Like Ham and Swiss, right. baby. Looks like we need to adjust our shelves back here because our mustard is currently load bearing. <laughs> <Is it> really? <laughs> I'm trying to. So we adjusted the shelves and uh, they seem to have moved on on that crazy dirt road or rattled loose. Yeah. Their little uh, Phillips head screws that tighten them on. Break further yet? We'll uh, mess with this at camp. But let's uh. Let's take a look at the suspension because I want to see what this is actually like under here. It's got some bump stops with some sort of articulating suspension. They've got their new trailing arm that has springs and shocks. So this doesn't look like it has shocks in it. And I think that's why it's so bouncy. So it's got just an arm and then what's stopping the arm from going up and down is a soft just a rubber bump piece. Stop. Yeah, it's just a soft little bump. There's no, so if you look at like a, like a Patriot Camper or the Turtleback trailers, if you've ever seen those, like the Patriot Camper trailer and the Turtleback trailers, they'll have like a trailing arm, an actual spring and a shock. Yeah, that's what their right? upgraded suspension yeah, is. Yeah, so that's what this. you'd want to be able to do. Up, yeah, to be able to bomb, so, yeah. bomb down yeah, these roads. Because what, what we're running into, the challenge with this, is as we're going down these roads, you know, all of a sudden there'll be something in the road whether it's a bit of washout something's a little off camber a big bump a pothole and i just can't stop fast enough and i'm not going fast we're only doing maybe 40 kilometers an hour but when the trailer hits it behind us it just bounces up and down really heavily i guess that's why off-grid developed their trailing our suspension with an actual spring and a shock because i think that would take up a lot of that because what it is is the rebound it's rebounding heavily and uh, bouncing up in the air so so if you guys see this right there off in the distance is fort rock which is the volcanic crater that uh, paul's taking us to this is a lot bigger back than it looks from the road back when you could do the fun things oh. this is way bigger up here than it did look than it looked driving by yeah. <laughs> wow fort rock all right Rock. Quick stop as we pass by Fort Rock. Huge crater, all volcanic rock all up in here. And uh, this isn't really uh, off the grid too much. It's actually a paved entrance coming in here. So if you want to come check it out without your off-road off vehicle, you can. I think the dunes are going to be pretty hot tonight. Oh, it's going to be a warm one when we get there. Dunes are due that way. So we're heading Head east. way east. And so, like over the course of this trip, well, we'll pop out in Idaho, right? We'll pop out in Idaho. So we're just gonna keep yeah. going east in Oregon, to the southeast to Alvord, and then we'll pop into the Waihees, and then we'll pop into Idaho. Big journey for this week's adventure. Is that Ryan up there? He hike. What are you doing? You hiking? This is an off-road channel. <laughs> So I brought both safety seconds. Right yeah, we got the new shirts Bam. that I'm wearing. We just put up on dirtyanddangerous.com. Hopefully there's still some. If we don't have any stock in your size, just add yourself to the waiting list and you'll get an email when we restock the store. But, and then you'll, you'll feel safe until you get them. And then <laughs> safety will become second. Exactly. We got the key tags now as well. And we got the patches. You guys keep asking for Velcro patches. Making the safety second big on the shirt was the right call. We're here at the, uh, was this Christmas, Christmas dunes? Valley sand Christmas dunes. Valley sand dunes. <laughs> and uh, we got to get our flags out because we're not allowed to drive on the dunes without our flags. You have a flag for the trailer, right? No. <laughs> you don't have a flag for the trailer? What? <laughs> it's funny. Well, well, when we were in Oregon, yeah. at the oh, in Oregon, we're in Oregon. We're at the, the other dunes. Yeah. And the sheriff came up to talk to us about flags. He's like, oh, you need your flag higher. It needs to be nine feet. Nine feet. Yeah. Because my flag was sticking up about two okay. feet above my thing. Okay. I'm like, and as he got closer, he's like, oh, your Jeep is really tall. <laughs> nine feet from the ground. Yeah. Well, the Jeep is like eight feet, so we don't need much. What else we got? We got the signage over here. So required flags. Must bring your own firewood, no burning anything here, no shooting. Yeah, pack in, pack out, all the general, general rules. 
And uh, we have some uh, the map here for what we can use and what we can't use. What's the strategy here? <laughs> zip tie it. I just zip tie it. Ginger approved. <laughs> I have a couple of zip ties. Just hold on. Well, that's fine, Sean. Look at that. It's right just hanging out. So we are just going to uh, zip tie our dune, our dune flag onto our adventure rack and uh, we'll be good. Here we go. We're entering the dunes and we got the trailer behind us. <laughs> How cool is that? That's the first time this trailer's seen sand. So we'll uh, see how it does out here. recording no just kidding <laughs> <laughs> oh no All right, we got whoops I was having way too much fun in two-wheel drive Let's see if John could get one off too all right uh we got uh I think we got like a plank of wood or something well I, just, I have my bottle take, jack which might max. make life easier oh yeah max rocks will work okay yeah. Pop that under there and yeah. the uh, we're gonna need a shovel. Yeah, because you your diffs on the on the. <laughs> you're sand. buried. You're buried. When I hammered the brakes, yeah. as you can see, the other side locked up. Yeah. Can you back um, up at all, maybe? Well, I'd be able to back up, I'm sure. And just get out I don't of that. Think I'm stuck. Yeah, just get out of that back hole. Out just gently. Okay. And, and we'll get us more in yeah. here so you're not so buried. Get out of the hole and then. Uh, oh, Well, I took the tire off. Oh, there you go. Really? Okay, okay. That's good. That's good. Stop, stop, stop. Yeah. Yeah. You just want to get out of that hole. E brake. If it makes you feel any better, when I was on the dunes, I drove off a ledge and snapped my front axle on my Did other you Jeep. Really? So, uh, <laughs> you know, it could be a lot worse. <laughs> John stuck? Back up. Use your little fancy turret up mode to get out. <laughs> yeah. there. No, don't. So it's jacked up. First thing we're going to try to do is seat it with some air. If that doesn't work, we can put a ratchet strap around the bead of, or the tread of the tire and squish it down and try to force the bead out and fill it with air. And if that doesn't work, well, we can either try, uh, not lighter, well, not lighter fluid. What do we, what's the fluid called? Uh, uh, fluid. Yeah, anyways, starter fluid. Starter fluid. Or we'll just take it off and put the spare on. But, uh, you know, I've had pretty good success with the ratchet strap on finicky tires that uh, need to be rebeaded. There is a, uh, the tire is like folded in half on the back side. Uh, a, put some air in it, just see what happens. No, like it's like doing that. Oh, okay. <laughs> on the bead, on the, on oh, the, on the far on the side. Backs. Yeah, if you look under the yeah. right. rock hard, okay. you can see it. But hopefully I can just rotate. All right, the moment of truth, Ryan. Oh. Go, baby, go! Come on! Holding. 
Holding. Holding. Uh, give me your most. I'm, I'm gonna jump no matter what happens. Give me your most happens. concerned expression right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thumbnail right there. <laughs> no waiting. All right, back in action. Probably the simplest, easiest way to get the tire back on. We didn't have to bust out the ratchet strap or any other any magic, exciting stuff. Any other exciting methods of repair. So that's your freebie, Ryan. That's it. I gotta play, <laughs> I gotta play nice now. <laughs> you got you got out really uh, unscathed. <laughs> so high marking now. Right? <laughs> Forget flat tires, <laughs> roll the damn thing. Okay, we're gonna go catch up with the rest of the crew and uh, see what's up for camp tonight and what Chef John's cooking for dinner. It's 5.30, you see the sun's getting pretty low behind me. We're gonna camp somewhere out here, which would be a lot of fun, but it's really hot. So need that sun to go down a little bit. <laughs> All right, guys, look at this campsite. That Look at this, we're on the beach. On the beach? You look like you guys are on the beach with those chairs. On the beach. <laughs> we have uh, made it to the dunes. So these are the dunes. What is this, the Chris? No, what's the Christmas, cr dunes. Christmas, Christmas dunes. Valley dunes? Christmas Valley Dunes on the far Christmas southeastern Christmas. corner of, <laughs> on the far southeastern corner of Oregon. And uh, we're gonna keep adventuring in this area for the next couple of days, but what a wild, fun day today. Um, but. We got Chef John, he's cooking up a storm. Let's go check in with him and uh, see what's on the menu it's for really tonight. It's not a storm. What? <laughs> he's not cooking up a storm? I don't know, it looks like a storm, a flurry of cooking going on over here. It's a flurry of chopping. We're flurry of chopping, like, we got you in the shade. It's like, it's really hot. How's that chair? It's chairing. Looks like you're on the beach. Comfy. <laughs> I'd love a chair. Well, like oh, I know what's for dinner. Look at this, John. Confirm my suspicions. We have it. We Sean, have it? Sean's favorite. Sean, what's your favorite? Everyone's favorite, the Philly cheesesteak. Yeah, it's gonna be so good. So if uh, you guys haven't seen Chef John's Philly cheesesteaks out on our camping trips before, well, unfortunately you won't be able to taste them, but I'll definitely show you how awesome they are once you finish cooking them up. None for you. None for you guys, None sorry. <laughs> good little galley. Not too bad. Table, the extra, the extra burner helps though. Yeah. A little more space. Oh, cheese in there. Got cheese in it. Cheese. Yeah. Cheese in it. Cheese on it. Oh. Sounds pretty cheesy. It's oh. pretty cheesy. There you go, buddy. Dude, you're my hero. You know oh, that? Have you been missing those? I've been missing these. <laughs> oh man, I'm, this is like I don't deserve this. <laughs> you're right, you don't. <laughs> Chef John's signature Philly cheesesteaks. Yeah. One day will be in his cookbook if he ever makes it. I know you guys keep asking for it, but leave lots of comments. The more comments, yeah. the more will motivate John to make One a cookbook. Day, maybe. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Sean's gonna show us how to do an outro. If you like Philly cheesesteaks, hit the thumbs up, and we'll see you in the next one. Well, you gotta do it with me at the same time. Ready? <laughs> yeah. Ready? One more thing. Okay, ready? One more. If you like Philly cheesesteaks, hit the thumbs up, and we'll see you, you in, the next, in the next one. one. The next next one. <laughs> I am never doing another outro with these guys around.